What's up, world, and welcome to Mike Drops, the show of, by, and for artists. My name is Mike Thompson, and today we are talking about the greatness of Photoshop gradient maps. If you're an artist that wants to colorize your grayscale painting, this tip is for you. I have my Chun-Li image. The first thing I do is go to my adjustment layers and select gradient map as what I want. And you can see you have a few different presets. Um, I have a blue one for her dress that I've already selected and I'm gonna go in and adjust it now. The way gradient maps work is they assign colors to your grayscale values. Uh, so if you have black, it's going to assign whatever is that uh, color you have on the far left. In the middle, uh, your mid-range, you can select a color as well. And, uh, and then the same goes for the uh, highlights. And you can add or subtract as many of these as you want and get the precise control that you need to make it look like you've spent hours and hours painting uh, colors into these areas and get some really nice transitions, by the way. So I'm just doing that to the blue right now. I'm not concerned with anything else because I'm gonna use the layer masks to paint in exactly where I want those uh, blues to appear, right? So just sliding around my sliders, adjusting the blues to try to make it look as much like my finished piece as I can. And uh, once that is done, I'm gonna okay it. Um, thought it'd be interesting to uh, put some, uh, some pink in my highlights. I think later on I go back and change that to white. But once it's okayed, I select my layer mask and I'm going to invert that to black. What that does is it hides all of what you just did. Now the great thing is you can go in and make selections where you want the blue to appear with your lasso or with your brush, it doesn't really matter. You're on the layer mask right now. And once you delete that away, you'll see, boom, like magic, you get the color to appear. And you can go in and adjust uh, the selections and get that blue exactly where you want it. It's non-destructive. So I've sped ahead and pretty much made selections for everything else, but you can see it's rough, right? So I'll go in with my brush now and refine that edge, clean up everywhere where I do not want the blue to appear in the filigree, right? So paint that in. I'm gonna speed ahead in a minute so you can see what it looks like. And you're gonna have a beautiful, non-destructive uh, painting of the blue dress in only the areas where you want it to appear. So great thing about gradient maps while it's doing that is that you can adjust them at any time. You're never locked into any particular color. You can go in and select other gradient maps to see what it looks like, which I'm gonna do at the end of this video. And you can adjust the, the maps that you've already made. All right, so now I've done that, I'm doing the background, which is simple, right? There's only three of the colors that are selected there. There's actually two, I just added one and I'm gonna have a really muted uh, blue, a gray, and a white, and that gives me that background color that, uh, that you see on the left, All right? I'll name it, save it. Once they're saved, you can go back to them whenever you want to and use them, which is really useful for skin. Um, say you're painting people a lot, you don't wanna do the skin over and over again, uh, you go back to it. So now I'm doing the gold in the, uh, the design on her dress, and it's, again, going in, I can select that uh, gray that I had for the background, change those colors to oranges and yellows, and uh, like magic, I have exactly what I want. And you can see I'm using the same process over and over again. I'm going to go to my layer mask, uh, invert it, which is essentially filling it with black, and then I paint with white all the areas that I wanna show my gradient map. That's pretty fast, but I wanna save even more time. I'm an illustrator, I don't have time to waste. So I'm gonna select my blue where the dress is and invert that selection. And now, without even having to worry about painting over stuff, I can go in, paint in those golds without having to worry about getting on the blue. All right, so once I'm happy with my gold, I'm going to do the same thing for her skin tone. Uh, in the interest of saving time, I've done it off camera, but I did the same process. Okay, and I like that now, but I want her lips and her cheeks to be a little more pink. So I go under the adjustment layers and I select hue saturation. Uh, once that's done, I pull the hue slider over more to red. I like that. I'll invert the mask and now I'll just paint in the lips, right? And I'll have the red right on the lips. 
get my airbrush with the soft edge and I'll paint her cheeks, get a little bit of that nice kind of pink color in her cheek, make her feel more alive. And now I'll move on to her leggings and do the same exact process, make them feel a little more like stockings, uh, select in her legs, refine the mask, boom, and there are her leggings. And I can go to my layer or composite method and change it to something like overlay or a color or hue and see what those leggings look like. And I can adjust the opacity and make them look exactly the way I want. I think the thing I want you to take away from this is you get so much control. And right now I'm changing the colors of the dress on the fly just by selecting different gradient maps. So I think you'll agree they're pretty dope. Listen, that's the show. I'm Mike T. Uh, tune in for the next episode. Please like, share, subscribe on YouTube. Hashtag Mike Drops on Twitter. Let me know what you want to see on future episodes. And check my website, MikeTArtworks.com. Peace.